course, the huge, should I even say huge story this week, has to be Donald Trump going deep into the heart of minority Democrat country in the Bronx, New York, to speak to tens of thousands of enthusiastic supporters. But you know what? While the rally itself was big news, leading to this fantastic New York Post front page <laughs> uptown funk, I think everyone's kind of missing the point if they don't look at what Donald Trump actually said at the rally and then contrast it really properly with what Joe Biden is out there saying. Because only then will you understand not only why tens of thousands of locals came out for Trump on a Thursday afternoon, but why Trump's message is eating away at the Democrats' traditional stronghold of voters in the black and Hispanic communities. Let me break it down for you. Trump empowers minorities. He doesn't pander to them. Biden, on the other hand, tells them they're victims and that everything bad that happens to them is someone else's fault. Don't believe me? Let me prove it to you. Let me show you a little bit, first of all, of Joe Biden speaking at the historically black Morehouse College the other day in the U.S. You missed your high school graduation. You start a college just as George Floyd was murdered. And there was a reckoning on race. It's natural to wonder if democracy you hear about actually works for you. What is democracy? If black men are being killed in the street, what is democracy? The trail of broken promises still leave black, black communities behind. What is democracy? You have to be 10 times better than anyone else to get a fair shot. Got that? Joe Biden is saying is if you're black, you're a victim automatically. Forget democracy. The system he's saying is rigged against you and even trying to kill you. Any one of you as a black American, he's saying, could wind up getting killed by the cops just like George Floyd, even if, unlike Floyd, you led a perfectly blameless life. And you have to work 10 times harder, Biden said, to get ahead. Gee, how inspiring. Now, though, let's have a look at what Donald Trump had to say in New York. It doesn't matter whether you're black or brown or white or whatever the hell color you are, it doesn't matter. We are all Americans and we're going to pull together as Americans. Now, remember, if you listen to the media, they'll tell you that Donald Trump is the one dividing people, that he's the one who's talking down democracy. Oh, nonsense. He's the one there with the message that it doesn't matter who you are, you can make it in America. Biden is the one out there dividing people by race and, more importantly, more sinisterly, telling black Americans that they are victims, disempowering them, saying that anything bad that happens to them, again, is not their fault, but rather, it's the system. And look, this was part of the theme of the whole speech. America is in a lot of trouble, Trump said. New York is in a lot of trouble. Thanks to really identifiable problems from defund the police to open borders, well, New York was once the greatest city in the world. And now, thanks to the Democrats, Trump says, and he's right, it's a dump. But his message is, together, we can fix it. Now, all of this that Trump says, says represents a message that the elite who, in the age of the internet, are no longer able to gatekeep is getting through to members of the minority groups the elite used to be able to control or think they controlled. People like this guy. You said you've always voted Democrat, but this yes. year it's going to change. Why is that? Because I've seen the change go for the worse. With the Bidenomics, with the Democratic Party, I've been Democrat all my life. And Donald Trump, he just has the right answers. He's speaking on illegal immigration, all the money pouring out of the country, people losing their jobs, the economy is failing. 
And at 60 years old, I realize now that we have to support Donald, Donald Trump and make things better. And then there was these voters. It's too much crime. It's, everything is going downhill. The economy is going bad. The food is expensive. It's like affordable housing is too, for, not for everybody. It's just horrible. I want food to go cheaper. The gas, I want gas cheaper. When I came and he was the president, the gas was a lot cheaper than it is right now. Now we're becoming the Bronx second class citizens. We have this influx of migrants are coming in and they're getting everything and everyone in the Bronx in the city of New York is, is forgotten. There you go. And no wonder, given all that, there was such a freak out by the rest of the media. The New York Times practically had kittens reporting that at a Trump rally in the Bronx, chance of build the wall. <laughs> oh my God, the horror. Though this CBS reporter was forced to concede that the rally looked like America. What else really stood out to you about the rally? I will say this rally did look a lot like America. There was a lot of Asian voters there. There were a lot of Hispanic voters, a lot of black voters there, which is not typical for a Trump rally that no. I go to when I'm in Wisconsin or Michigan. My favorite bit of the media freak out, though, was this CNN correspondent who looked like she was going to need about eight Sauvignon Blancs to recover from the yeah. ordeal of being out there with real Americans. What was the crowd like and what kind of response did he get? Well, certainly a bigger crowd than I think Democrats would like to see, particularly given this is one of the bluest counties in the entire country. One of the things that I found was that there were a lot of people here that were actually from the Bronx. <laughs> we got to do the dance there, too, don't we? But anyway, mark my words, this speech that Trump came, gave was a turning point for the campaign. He took his message again into the heart of the Bronx and doing so and getting such a good reception while Democrats and the media fume is a sign that momentum is really on his side now. And polls agree. They indicate that Trump has cut Biden's lead in New York State to single digits while his share of the minority vote keeps growing. Now, I'm not sure Trump can actually take New York, which hasn't voted for a Republican since 1984, when Ronald Reagan trounced Walter Mondale, there's a name for your pub trivia, <laughs> winning every state but Minnesota as well as Washington, D.C. But I am now more convinced than ever that Trump can win this thing overall in November.